it was a cutthroat business, so they all got IBM computers so they could get the orders, load the trucks, have all the orders ready, and shoot out at uh, 5, 6 in the morning. So you were selling them computers? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know. I just yeah. remember uh, when we were a kid, we always had cases of liquor around <laughs> for parties. <laughs> but the computers we had, if you remember the first IBM computer that was out, the PC? Yeah. It was a little bigger than that, but it took up... I would say this. Yeah, that, that whole room. <laughs> an entire room's worth of PC. And it had tubes and transistors yeah. and not many transistors. Though you, you can see the transistors on each one. And one. one oh, it was that was terrible. That I had. I drove home on the LIE. It was bad. But it was, what the hell was it? It was Easter? Good Friday, that's what it was, Good Friday. Because Good Friday, all the liquor stores are closed. There's no, no liquor store open on Good Friday in New York. So, so we had to do um, upgrades to the computer, which we, we pretty much would always schedule every, every these at these days that they're closed. So, uh, so we got there. It was me and it was my account, but I, you, you always use them and you always do two people. Mm -hmm. Cause somebody would read the instructions because you had to delete wires and add wires. And so we uh, got it all done. Tested out the computer, everything worked fine. And the owner was there. So he said, come on, I'll give you a tour. <laughs> and it was Austin Nichols. Why does that name sound familiar? Well, they're the ones that had the sole rights to uh, Wild Turkey. Ah, and that's where I've seen and the Wild Turkey's a blend. Yeah, a bourbon blend, right? But we had the wild turkey before they blended oh. it. Oh. <laughs> and? Right from the barrel. This is a good I mean, beer. big barrels oh, where they would bottle it. Oh, they okay. bottled right there. Right. Your dad used to drink way mm. too much. <laughs> I don't know, he's 80 years old. Seems like maybe he drank just enough. Preserved. <laughs> yeah, preserved. So, what, what, what would a computer look like? This would have been back in the, what? 1960. 1440. 1440. The first computer was 1401. Okay. Second one was the 1440. The 1440 had the first big disk drive. Okay. How and many, the, and how the many disk drive was this high, out to here, down to the floor, <laughs> and the whole hydraulic top would come up, and it would be oh, three gosh. platters, and they'd be about that big, and you had to unscrew them. <laughs> how and, much and did it store? I, I think maybe one megabit, one megabyte or something. That's like that. like smaller than an MP3 is. Today. Yes, Isn't yeah, that crazy. Nothing, and yeah. it didn't store Where much did at all. Go? Right there. He's, right. in, he's in the. Oh, okay. The there he is. But it was fun. I, I enjoyed working for IBM. I had a lot of. I didn't. I liked the drive when I worked nights. Cause mm. I used to work nights. Okay, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, work midnight. We so lived on Long Island. Yeah. And then I. Drive in at midnight with no traffic. Come home in the morning. Be going. Everybody will be going in. In the opposite direction. So you work right on Manhattan exclusively, or all over? No, Queens. 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 Okay. Well, you guys are from Queens, so that yep. would have been the old stomping grounds. Yep. But then, what they did is they closed the Bronx office, and so I have no idea how it happened, but I got the Lower Bronx and Upper Manhattan. Oh my. So I had Harlem. Okay. And I like? probably told you that story many, many times, but I got a call at three o'clock in the morning. Oh my. The, um, in the lower Bronx, have you ever been through the Bronx? Uh, it, if, don't if I have, it's been so long. Well, where all the, a lot of the subway trains go, the Long Island Railroad trains go, and a lot of freight trains. There's a freight yard that you can look for miles, and literally the city is built over the freight yard. Okay. It goes underneath. And the house that had these computers in there would punch cards. They had a punch card for every box car or flat car or whatever that came through. Right. 
and they were building up a train and, the, and it went. So I got there, it was like 2 in the morning, I got there like 3.30 and you're, you have to park up on the platform and you got stairs that goes way down and I mean mm. I'd say 500 steps to go down, <laughs> big long one. So you parked up there and I walked <laughs> down and here I am, I got IBM, you had an attaché case. Yeah. With you know, look like a. It looks like a nerd. Like a like a Wall Street exec. <laughs> yeah. An overcoat and a suit and a, suit and a tie. Navy blue suit, white shirt. That that uniform. <laughs> Always I white shirt. Always had a white shirt, and I'm walking down the stairs with the suitcase in my hand, and a light goes in my face and says, "Freeze!" <laughs> and, Gun barrels are pointed at me. Holy and, crap! And I, I, I dropped my bag. I almost peed in my <laughs> pants. <laughs> and they, who are you? You know, and tell them who I am. And they had a vouch with the guy. And he, yeah, he's coming here to fix the machine. And okay, if I would have came one half hour sooner, yeah, I would have ran into the guys robbing the boxcars. Oh, wow. <laughs> With guns and everything. Is it like a Gambino I, crime family? I have thing, no or? idea what they ripped off, but they ripped off two boxcars, and th those are the railroad police coming to s see if they could find any more of them around. This somebody spotted them and called. Huh. Holy and uh, I told my boss the next morning, he says, I don't care what the hell they call, they can call me ten times, I ain't going back there ever again mm. at night. <laughs> no way in hell. Did you go during the day though? I'd go during the day, that was yeah. my account. Sure. But I ain't going back at night. Huh. I told him what happened to me, he says, oh my God. Right, I, well, I don't know if they, they let any more people go, but boy, I, that's one story I'll never forget oh, all God. those guns in my face Not a lot of people I thought it was that. over I mean here I am a young guy with two kids and <laughs> <laughs> but now you have to tell the story about what it was like growing up with all the various milkmen and ice men because I want to hear that I want, I want to be able to tell that to people maybe really? get some songs out of it too <laughs> So what was it like growing up in Queens? You grew up on what, well, what, what street? I originally was, you know, when I was born, I grew up across the street from Wyckoff Heights Hospital. My mother had worked there as a nurse's assistant or okay. aide. <coughs> and, um, that wasn't her first job in the States, was it? No, she no, she, that was after her marriage, okay. after she and my dad got married. No, she worked up in New Rochelle for a wealthy family, and their last name was Teller, Teller. the Tellers, okay. Jewish family, very lovely, she loved them. She was a um, housekeeper, a cook, huh. uh, and a nanny. Right. They had two children, a boy, a teenage, and then the younger boy, who she really enjoyed him, the younger yeah. boy. Um, and they loved her, and they had to move to Chicago, I suppose, uh, for his business, whatever right. he was doing. And that's where that trunk came from. Oh, she yeah. went to Chicago, and by that time she was engaged to my father, who these people did not particularly approve of. <laughs> The <laughs> shifty stonemason from yeah. Germany. <laughs> you know, so he wasn't their favorite person. So, but they they moved her with them to Chicago, right. and so she got she loved linens and mm. sheets and all those things, and she shopped at. Um, what is it? Not not Dayton's uh, Marshall Field. Marshall Field. Marshall is a big Field. One. She bought a lot of stuff for her trousseau. Huh. Packed up that trunk with things. Nice. And um, well, it was more margarita. Unfortunately, or she didn't stay with them. She mm -hmm. went back with my father, who who he lived in Queens, not far from where Dad and I ended up when we got married, huh. with his whole family. His father, mother, brothers, sisters, everybody was there in huh. a small apartment. And, you know, in those days, you just shared one bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> well, haven't met either well, a lot of people shared one bed. So. Well, yeah, they didn't do that, but mm. they were, yeah. So, till they were married, they had to stay there. And um, 
Anyway, my father worked with his father because he was a stonemason. My right. father was had learned his trade from his own father, who was a stonemason in Germany. And my what do they call that apprentice under his own father? Okay, that's and not usual, is it? That mm, the apprentice. Was I don't own. know, but mm. yeah. Maybe. And maybe maybe there were others involved. I don't know. Well, I've but seen the death records. Stonemason Schultheises go back to the 1700s. So really? Yeah. But you you don't. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know much about your dad. Does more of that than I do. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Um, he, and my father, you know, soon was like a top stonemason, yeah. whatever. Master, in, Germany? in Germany? In Germany, master stonemason. So when he came here to this country, the only j first job he got was working in the subways, mm -hmm. repairing cement. Well, and they were tile, building the subways. Tile. I, I don't know about building the subways. subways tile weren't work. Built. They were building it in the 1900s, yeah. He came in 1925. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It was still building. Okay. I mean, some I lines were running, but they were still building. More than I do, but probably did both. Wouldn't be surprising. Yeah. yeah. And then his dad, his my grandfather, died, right there working on the he, job in the subway. Yeah, an aneurysm. I didn't remember that. Yeah, an aneurysm, and um, he wasn't an old man. Fifty-six. Oh, yeah. And a veteran of World, World War, War One. One. Yeah. And. Was it two also? No, I no, guess they no, got he here was before. Here. Yeah, they got here before. Yep. He wanted out of Germany. Hmm. He felt that there was no life for yeah. a big family in Germany and they'd never get anywhere. And the only thing he did was he wanted to make sure all his sons had trades of some sort. Like mm -hmm. my Uncle Jack was the painter, wallpaper. Mm -hmm. My Uncle Hans was a uh, wheelwright, like oh. a carpenter, you know. Wow, like uh, cartwheels and so forth. Yeah, wheels, made but, wheels yeah, and really a lot of carpentry. carpentry yeah. you know, wood and metal. Professional oh. carpentry. Mm -hmm. And Uncle George did not really have, you know, although he and Uncle Jack were identical twins, right. Uncle George I don't know what happened, but he he didn't. He just got a regular job, you know, when he was married. I don't. I never heard that he had a particular trade. So. But now, that's, is that all the brothers? Yeah, I'm trying. Albert, to think. Hans, Jack, George. George. Gutlob. Gutlob. Uncle Gutlob was a mechanic. He did. Huh? He used to work for the A and P on huh? their trucks and stuff. I don't know if he learned that in Germany. He was the youngest. Okay. And uh, so maybe he didn't. And Tana Frieda, his the sister, the youngest child in the right. family, she went to high school at Grover Cleveland in Ridgewood. And, uh, but then she married uh, a fellow from Germany and he wanted to go back. And he was a little empathetic with Hitler at well, that time. Wasn't he a party member? I don't know if he was exactly a party member, but nobody liked him. <laughs> his last name was Stein. Okay. And they always called him Stein. <laughs> his, first, his first name was Hans, but no one ever oh. called him that. <laughs> so nobody liked him because mm. he, was, he was a little nuts, I guess, yeah. with that. But my yeah. aunt apparently loved him, and she went back. But he didn't treat her so well. Mm. And he, Karen especially, he didn't treat Karen. Right. And Uncle Gutlob and my aunt, his wife, Helen, went to Germany and they got everything arranged so that Karen would come to live with my family, my parents huh. and, and me. When, what year was that roughly? Oh my god. After the war? It was after the okay. war, yeah. It was after the war. So it had to be, you know, I, I'm trying to remember 40, I was born in 42, the war mm -hmm. was over in 45, I guess. Yeah. So it had to be, you know, before 50, before oh. 1950, thereabouts. Mm. But at the last minute, her dad said no. She really? was going to have to stay. Because he was a, a little bit um, uh, smacking her around all the time. Physical and she, she said that physical yeah. abuse. Oh. Not sexual or anything like that, but, you know, he got me. What happened is she had a brother who, at the you know, the Karen. first boy... Karen had a brother or something? Karen, yeah, okay. and I forget what was his so name. Was Hans, I, I think it might have been Hans. Mm -hmm. And he died of leukemia. Oh, wow. And, you know, he was a young boy. And so somehow Karen 
was the one that came after him, and she lived, and he was mad that she lived. And he, she was and a, a he girl. he lost the son, yeah, right. right. And he had all the other girls ahead of time, Ermgard mm. and Margaret. So uh, I, don't, I don't know what the story was, well, but... That's the family lore. Yeah. And anyway, so my uncle Gutlow tried to get... And my aunt was willing to release her because she couldn't stand it, mm -hmm. you know, to see him smacking her yeah. around. And um, Did Frida ever come back or did she stay in Germany? She stayed, she stayed. but things got better between them. Yeah. Be, you know, once, once they kind of... Uh, I met Tante Frida. No. Oh, you did, yes. Mm. You did meet when you went with your class. But her husband was gone already, yeah. yeah. It was in the town of Budenhausen. Budenhausen yes, mm. and she lived She lived in the family home mm. at that time and stayed there until she died. And um, her brother, Werner, mm -hmm. you he met took... Him. Yeah, you met him. And he was the one who took care of her in her older years. I mean, she wasn't that old when she died. Mm. Um, but he kind of took care, he had the money, he had a good job with the postal service over there. And mm. so he fixed up the house so they had a bathroom indoors instead mm. of outdoors. And, oh, so and you saw the house, saw it was house. very nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Paul, you saw the house too, didn't you? Yeah. 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 You were in it. Where I took you around. But it didn't used to be, obviously. Outdoor. Well, it was very basic. Like my father always talked about how he and a couple of the boys had to sleep up in the sort of an attic. The loft. And all they had was uh, mattresses stuffed with hay. Yeah. You know, straw and hay and stuff. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, they were poor. And that's yeah. why my grandfather said, we have to move. We have to get out of Germany. So they, they were poor, but they, they weren't peasant because they Not all had really. trades. Yeah, my, yeah had my, my grandfather, you know, he was, yeah, he was very talented. Yeah. What did, did, he, did we ever see anything that great-grandpa built? Well, they, you know, when they drove us around, they sometimes said, oh, they worked on this right. cathedral or something, right. you know, way up in the, yeah. but I don't, I don't know, I mm. wouldn't, yeah. I can't keep track of, track of all that. Mm. Um, Dad got a really and nice little note from Karen and Horst for his birthday. Oh. They're really good. We got to call them and sure. see how they're doing. Um, very nice. And your, Hang on, somehow your, 